pushes and dueling game, like a dueling game positionally on the outside, whereas other teams often very much try, uh, try to pay, uh, apply the style of, of playing passively outside and giving it away. But we're now into the pistol as Cloud9 are with uh, a few nades here on uh, Sean Gers and Shroud. So let's see if they're able to pull off an execute here. They're going to be dropping down immediately as they are giving up the ramp. He's going to be dropping nothing. And this is looking like quite the massacre here. TLG with four fast kills. And Sentis goes down in the end as well. So very, very nice. Cloud9 not able to execute at all. And CLG only losing one man. So Cloud9 now going to have to decide how do they manage this. Are they going to go for a save? It would be a very smart, especially with um, the strength of some of these SMGs. Although only Haste will be picking one up. CLG. Okay, Sean with the uh, the flash, the smoke, the molly. Three players of armor. You can see the pistols as well. What is the play here from Sean Garras? That is the question. I'll eventually start calling him Sean Garras, but for now, he is Mr. Garras. So just gonna tap a hole into a door, try and get some information. Maybe try and bait a play to peek. No need to blow the door off, however. So. See, people just holding angles outside, and the T's are rotating back towards lobby. So, oh, attack his teammate in the leg. Okay, so, it's going to be a ramp push after all. Finesse is going to get the first frag. He is going to run down into B as well. So, not going to give up any frags, any guns to the team. Going to want to draw them in to a horrible place. You can see his teammates rotating there on the X-ray. So, they're going to be looking for the slaughter RCLG as his push comes in for Cloud9. Good at the moment, as they are going to take down Finesse. They need to get control of the control room quite swiftly now as they move on to the bomb site. Because CLG, whilst they're losing men, they have good positions. We've got Peter coming in from the flank, and here it is quick shot onto Stempfist. Can't close out on the kill, but he's done the damage. And Hayes with an MP7 should, should be more than enough, but he's going to find himself a Famas. A slight upgrade there for him as he looks for the shot. Here we go. Cloud is very low now. Last man standing, and it's Clutched by Hayes. Good one on two skills there from him. And CLG will pick this one up. But they lost four players and the bomb went down for Cloud9. You better believe they're going to have a huge pressure on this next round. They know they've done a lot of damage and they are going to be applying pressure to the wound. I would think, I mean, I suppose on Nuke, some teams would, would opt not to do that. Whereas it'd be an easier call on a map like Mirage or Dust 2, some of the more open maps. Um, so they're actually going to go with a save here. Um, just some t a couple of Tech 9s, a few P250s. So not going to apply that pressure after doing so much damage. They're going to give CLG a bit of breathing space. Now, CLG, they can repair all the damage that was done in the last round by having a flawless round in this one. So that's what they're going to be looking to do. But in comes this push outside from Cloud9. These pistols, and now they've been spotted. Over there from Evan looking for his quick frag onto Sean Gers. He's going to pull it off just now. And Peter still in a good position, able to spot for his teammates. CLG have a very good sense of control and, and uh, presence as well on the outside. And they are yet to lose a man. This is perfect so far from CLG. It's exactly what they needed. Wow. He's going to find a very, very nice shot there into Shazam. Very decisive wall bang there. 3 to 0 the score for CLG. Now, in comes the buy from Cloud9. And uh, CLG, they're still not looking super hot on the money. Definitely that previous round where they lost four players stung quite some. All right, let's see if they can retain on the first buy round here <coughs> for Cloud9. See Cloud9 going for a default there. A few players outside, a few players inside. Just making sure nothing crazy is happening from the CTs. No early rushes or anything lunatic-wise. I think main has been blown off already. You can see, I think it's Semphis in there holding an angle. Do we have some players on main roof? No, not yet. The Shroud peeking around. They're going to see Cutler in the secret area. So he's not going to repeat. Not just yet. See, he's going to a more passive position in case he hears a rush coming in. Will admire his knife in the meantime. Semp is still in the main area. That is a blind spot as well. If a CT were to push, they would specifically need to check a very hard angle to their left. Otherwise, they'd be at risk of just walking straight past. Definitely, when the CTs are on an eco and you're a T, 
Uh, it's good to go into Squeaky and just hide behind that wall, see if any of them try to push through and uh, take Lobby with some teammates. Well, quick push there from nothing, gonna take down Hayes straight down from the rafters. Now CLG, they've got a few holes in their defense and Cloud9 are applying a heavy amount of pressure onto those holes. But Tarek and Peter are gonna be locking it down so far, but in comes push close onto the bomb position. Oh wow, Tarek somehow managed to escape Shazam, but for how long? We'll go down in the end, and the bomb will go down. Shazam now, last man standing here for his team. Finds himself the one-on-one. -on -one. Cutler, there's the spray, the adjustment from Shazam. Will it be good enough? Two health left for him, and Peter will run him through with the M4A4, and that's going to be another round there for CLG. But once again, it was very costly, and Cloud9 really, after that bomb plant, could throw a strong round at them. So close from Cloud9. That was a really good effort from Shazam. Again, he was expecting the CT to re CT to re peak. So he went to, to basically continue his spray at the angle where the CT would re peak. And that would force Peter back. Peter managing to clutch it for his team. Very important clutch. And again, their money's not going to be spectacular just yet, but this is still very early days indeed. So I want to see a surge of humans outside. Here for the uh, Cloud9 team. Not sure how many Peter would have seen there, but I don't think he would have seen anything but nothing. See Semphis on main roof. Tarek should be able to hear that. See Tarek in main at the moment, but not near main, but he won't know that there's uh, two more players there. The bomb is outside as well. Semphis just trying desperately to find an angle. Peter saw a glimpse of him there, but could not convert the frag. Yeah, that's a co quite a cool angle finding position from Semphis for the outside picks. However, Cutler is going to take down Shroud, and that's going to give CLG a nice level of control now. They know that the bomb is down outside. They know that Cloud9, having lost two men, are going to be in a position where they have to go for some risky picks, but Peter will defend one of those attempts excellently, and that is going to be another advantage there for CLG. They are looking almost flawless in this round. Semphis is going to throw things through a loop, though, and take down Finesse. But what else can he get? I don't think Peter even saw uh, whoever that was. He just ought in the head, maybe Sean Gears. So he looks like he did on the x-ray, but I think they had two corner walls there. Obviously, it is the common spot. So 17 seconds remaining. Tanan going to try and push into A, but it's not going to work. Too low health, too outnumbered. And that's a 5-0 for CLG. A few players surviving that time, which is going to be important for their economy going forward. Cloud9. Again, they haven't won a single round, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, but their loss bonus is going to build and build until it gets to a certain point where they'll be able to buy every round. I mean, yeah, the, the 3400, they've already reached that. Um, now that they've lost five in a row. So 3400 every time. And they will, have, they, they, they will be in a position where they might as well. Um, depending on the kinds of strats that they have to play with, it'll be low grenades. But with the Tech 9 still as good as they are, they can actually legitimately play three AKs, two Tech 9s with, uh, with lots of nades um, for any executes that they want. Uh, the Tech 9s give you that flexibility. And once again, you know, they're, they're not finding much luck here with this, uh, these pistol saves. And CLG, you know, if they can build so much more economy from three rounds like this, it's going to get worse and worse for Cloud9. There is no doubt about that. But they're fast onto the lower bomb site now, and they are going to be getting a plant into the smoke as well. So CLG might have a little bit of a a little bit of um, a trouble on their hands, but nothing that they shouldn't be able to handle here. Great shot there from Shroud, though. That's CLG coming for retail. Only Shroud remaining. No armor on him either. He will get cut down. So CLG surviving with four players alive. And again, this is a, a map where the uh, C2 economy is oh so important. And it's interesting that what the, the, what you mentioned about Nuke and uh, the SMGs, because now Nuke's been taken out of the active juicy pool. You can expect it to disappear uh, from stage two of our league. We may not even see that meta come into play. Yes, I mean, well, I'd hope that the, the SMGs and 10 will be nerfed before that point, but never mind, that's just my opinion anyway. We're moving quickly into the next round. Oh, that's a glimpse of rage there. <laughs> a little glimpse of rage. We can go into that later on, at least my opinion. And Eric Banner. Starting to turn green. We have the upper push, and they're going to go straight down the vents. Quick drop there, but Tarek finds himself an excellent angle for some spray action. Cutler needs to clean up the vents, though, and he's going to be doing just that. Sucking out all of those nasty terrorist players who were dwelling in the vents. And it's going to be Cloud9. Three against four now. And the interesting thing is that they do have some position to work with. 
have a man outside. Oh, or is that? Yeah, I do believe they have a man outside. No, sorry, it's Shazam in the control room. So that's even better. He's going to be able to take down Peter as well. So three on three. Hayes is looking for some info right now. He wants to get the flank happening towards ramp. Cloud9, their play, their hand has been shown. They know that the lower play is about to hit. So creeping on this into the site. Clearing it bit by bit. Tarek's going to see the information, but he will fall. Three versus two retake. Two players quite tagged. There's the first one. Great uh, spray control there by FNS. Got a duel onto the site, which will be won by the T. So Hayes, last man standing, puts himself into a one versus one. He knows Sean is creeping around somewhere as he got the frag on the last player for the CTs. Sean knows already made his way into the vents. Is he going to pick the right angle? Hayes has a defuse kit and a smoke. Not going to need it. Going to find Sean Garza's face and give him a hail of bullets. Seven to zero here for Cloud9. And uh, again, this is, a ma this, is, this is must win for both teams. So, uh, so far, so good. <coughs> Still early days, though. Lots of rounds for Cloud9 to try and get back into this. You can see the force coming out there. Still no AWP on the uh, T side. You can see nothing. Had like 6.5k in the bank. Bit of a, a late buy. Could have dropped something, but uh, opted for the AK. Five AKs here for Cloud9. Yeah, the consistency of, of the fact that they're getting all these bombs down despite losing the rounds is really giving them a lot of flexibility in having all the nades they need. Where is Hayes right now? He seems to be in an advanced position. Okay. I'm misreading the map. It's, it's easily done on, on you guys, I give you. Yeah, thank I did it just uh, around a few before. So, well, Hayes is going to be sitting in the wall of smokes at the moment. I think he has a small gap with which to spot from. But it looks like Shroud is also going to be able to spot him. So that is nasty there for CLG. They might just uh, be on to some trouble once again. Sean Gare is going to make it a 5 on 3. Playing the Lurk role in the lobby area. Now he's going to try to slowly bust open the ramp area, but Peter's going to find a pixel of Sean Gares. And now it's just uh, down to the remaining players outside here from Cloud9 to make something happen. Now they're going to boost up in towards heaven. Now this is an excellent uh, play to work into an upper take if they want to move the other two players back towards main and have one come up the ladder. The lurk. So Cloud9 working on a really cool movement at the moment. Spray in from Semphistan and uh, four on two. Cloud9 looking strong. Tarek's got a very nice position here. He could get two frags. There's the first one. He is heavily tagged. Finds the second one as well. And all of a sudden, this round has spun back in favor of CLG. Pressure on Semphist to plant the bomb here. He doesn't have time to fake. You can see Tarek picking up the AK. Doesn't want to run out of bullets in a horrible situation. He's just going to hold an angle. He's got the time to do it as he does have a kit. The fact he's holding this angle will tell him when he pushes where the T might be. Oh, how did Semphis miss that shot? That was a free kill for him, but he did not manage to convert. And that could have changed everything. That could have been the beginning for Cloud9. But it's another round and still a clean sheet here for CLG. Just millimeters keeping Cloud9 on that zero. Yeah, that's really rough. Semphis has to be feeling pretty bad about that one. As you said, it was a really nice engagement and, well, Cloud9. Sitting duck, Dan. They need to make something happen. Well, they, you know, they might be onto the, onto the right idea. They had a very nice push onto the outside there, winning all their jewels and picks. And Sean Gares did a great job lurking in lobby, uh, even though he's, he's trying to actively take jewels, playing a little bit more aggro than you would expect uh, that role to be. Considering that his team was still outside and hadn't really moved down to control room or anything like that yet. Either way, we're going to have CLG looking to get some good pressure on the outside. They've got good positions here. They have a man pushing up secret. So Cloud9, they could, if they're able to win these duels, be in a really good position. But Cutler, with a timely peek, takes down Shroud, backs away, gives the information to his team. And CLG, once again, with an early round advantage. Yeah, they've got a reasonable amount of nades. A fair few mollies as well. So the name of the game at the moment will be just to burn as much of the clock as possible. You can see uh, Finesse just holding a passive angle. Obviously, Cloud9 are going to be paranoid about his teammate, possibly in secret. So he can just hold an angle, make sure nobody's pushing main. Sean Gare's holding an angle of his own. We'll see if the CTs get a bit hungry there. Tarek holding the passive angle for now. So CLG trying not to make any mistakes here, as they have to expect a burst coming in, probably towards the A site, as time is running out here for Cloud9. Indeed, the time is nigh. And Cloud9 look at all the angles as they move into the upper bomb site. Sean Gare's gonna get the flash out for a teammate and wrap around onto the bomb site. 
gets down Tarek, but in come the trades. Finesse and Hayes will frag their own. Up goes Cutler through that ladder and does take down Stemphis. Now nothing. He's got to come out huge. He's got a one on three. He's got 15 seconds left and they are pressuring him from all sides. Nothing, surely. It's going to have to pull out an amazing play to make this work. Five seconds left now. They're not showing. They are playing it by the book. His bombsite is on fire. And Peter, to add insult to injury, will take him down with the AWP with the wallbang. And 9-0 to zero now. Cloud9 are having so many uh, problems here. And the thing is, is that they're actually getting into the bomb plant and post plant kind of spots quite often. It's just that CLG's rotations are very good. And they always keep... In that round, we saw them be very um, passive after that first pick. And I love that conservatism from them. Again, another very late buy there from Shazam. I think they're having some discussions. Do we use the AWP? No, we can't use the AWP. The AWP sucks now, especially on the T side here on a map like Nuke. So again, they go with the AKs. I, I don't know if it's worth just uh, the gamble at this point with, with, with nothing to lose, basically. Nine and zero at the moment versus CLG, but um, the AKs will continue. And you can't criticize them for it as well, because it on paper, it would be a horrible buy. But you never know. Well, here we go, Finesse is going to make his aggression, and he's got another player to find. Finesse is going to hold it down, and the bomb is actually stuck there by radio as well. It's going to be uh, carried out of there, out of harm's way, as Shroud is going to open up the outside. But still, with a man advantage, Hayes going to win that duel against nothing, making life so much harder. Peter taking down Shroud. They are just running the distractions perfectly for Peter to find these quick shots, and he, it, he connects everything. 10-0 to zero now as CLG... I mean, they're looking good. It is Nuke, of course, so Cloud9 only realistically need three rounds um, to, to feel comfortable. But it does look dominant. It is really interesting that the the AWP has made uh, changes, have made a lot of spots more difficult for the T's. But I suppose in their favor, they have a Tech Knight, so maybe it, maybe it balances out in the end. <laughs> we shall see. Cloud9 running out of rounds to win here. That's basically what's happening. Two thirds of the first half already gone to CLG. Flawless victories. Five more to go. Cloud9 possibly looking for a different idea. We can see Cutler's in secret at the moment, but I don't think there's anybody outside for Cloud9. I think it is going to be a full on assault of the ramp area. Got a team, I think it's a team flash coming in already. Good position there from Finesse, able to back away, 7 health for him, but he's got cover. And Cloud9 cannot get at him just in time to get the kill, so this is uh, problematic. Cloud9, they, they gained the position, but they, the cost was a player. And now they're looking to slowly move in, and wow, they catch Finesse on the reposition, and that is key. So here is CLG, they know what's coming, they've got the repositions all across the vents, all across the control room, it's looking strong for them. But Cloud9, they're going to move through anyway. Actually, no, because you haven't, haven't repositioned that much. I felt like Finesse had seen quite a lot of the players there. They knew that ramp was compromised, but uh, the bomb is going to go down. This is Cloud9's big opportunity now. They've got good post plant positions. Peter's trying to get the flank working, but he's got two players to deal with here. Oh, they're almost lining up for him, but not quite. The trade comes in. Two on one now. Sean Gez to save the day for Cloud9. They need some clutch results. Semphis couldn't do it, but can Sean Garris pull it off? No, Hayes will take the kill. and. Sean Gares will not be able to pull it out this day. Those uh, those orps are gonna take some getting used to that. It's, it's, you can see, it's you, can, rough, you can see yeah. an example there of what a difficult situation he it puts it puts him in there, for better or worse. And it's the same thing. I said there are there are other examples. Like if you're an inferno trying to clutch, let's say you're uh, behind those pillars, in track, you're trying to peek left and right. You're you're doomed. You really are at this point. That's not, a, that's not a complaint, it's just an observation. Okay, so uh, as we go back into this one, Cloud9 still searching for options. Again, Wallace makes outside. And are oh, we going to see some aggression here from CRG? Peter is on that angle. He's looking for a, uh, a quick shot through the smoke. Now he's going to back away. He's not even going to rattle off a, a shot. Not going to give his position away just yet. Oh, gets one. Sean Gares goes down for free there, might I add. Peter doing excellent work so far for CLG, but Cloud9 have taken over control room once again. Now, can they use this as the base of operations for a lower plant, for a post-plant success? Nice Molly coming in there from Color. He will concentrate on the window as well. Trade coming in there from Semphis. 
One man advantage for CLG. Tarek in a super strong position there. Gonna get Shazam from the back. Now it's getting from bad to worse with the Cloud9. Tarek will clean up the remainder of the team. And CLG looking absolutely unstoppable at the moment. Do Cloud9 have an answer? Can they even get a single round? Yeah, it, it would be so nice if uh, Cloud9 had a lot of those set play nades on, on the upper bomb site. Because again, um, like I said, there's this one, there's, there's two particularly effective um, smokes um, that, that really help. And you don't need to use both of them. You can use, you can kind of either or it. Um, it depends on what you want to achieve. But there's the smoke where you throw it and it hits the glass and lands on heaven. And obviously the CTs can counter this by shooting out the glass. Obviously then you can't, the, the, you know, the, the impact will not happen and so the nade doesn't work. Um, and we do see teams do that sometimes. Of course, this is not happening in this game. I don't think anyone's been breaking the glass on the ceiling on the upper side. But that blocks off heaven. Um, or there's the smoke, again, which is in front of the hut. So it kind of makes it much harder for the players who are on the heaven side to take down the guys who are rushing out of hut. And they can run not out, but well, not straight forwards, but straight onto the right. Like, I'll take a hard right out of the hut. So you're facing main and you're covered um, from heaven. And if you if you're able to get out onto the site in that way really quickly, and you add in a, a few you know decent flashes, you've got yourself a nice upper rush. And uh, it's something we haven't seen um, a Cloud9 able to execute strongly just yet. And they've been relying a have quite heavily on these these outside plays um, so far. Okay, so look at that five Molotovs here for CLG. So Cloud9, not the only people studying this map. Should be obvious. Look at that aggressive smoke as well from Peter. No mercy on this man. You can see Cloud9 setting up for the wall of smokes again. And producer East, I do believe we are stuck in the smoke. But that said, we can. Uh, hey, let's try and cast Nuke from the minimap. How about that no, for a for no. a for a no. Wednesday night challenge? That is a challenge. Oh, he wants to bounce the three heavy. Yeah, that would have been quite humorous. Uh, nothing looking for the player on secret, of course. Uh, Cut has been really beasting this position, getting great trades for his team. But that's actually a favorable one there for Cloud9, finally. As they lose Cutler. Now, whether they choose to, to uh, rotate someone down to vents to fill that hole is up to them in this stage. I don't think they have done that yet. In fact, Cloud9 looking for a fast push on Rubber, trying to take these angels. And so far, once again, uh, PLG, they're just winning all the angels. And Cloud9. They are really struggling when it comes to these angels. Like it, it seems to be that that's the kind of game they're wanting to play for. But CLG are kind of outdoing them on a lot of these uh, these these spots. We're heading towards the region where I need to ask if we're going to see a 16-0 down. Well, it's it's new. It's it's new. Man. Yeah, it is. It is. And this has been dominant from CLG so far. And again, unless Cloudline can mix it up somehow, um, so far CLG have shown every capability of being able to deal with what Cloud9 are doing. They've been playing consistent setups, and oh, this might be just the moment. Semvis can't finish off Peter in time. There it is, gets the kill, goes for the fast drop, wants to continue the momentum, frag after frag, as it empowers him to drive forwards, closer to that bomb site. But Tarek and Finesse coming in to halt the push, and somehow they've made a massive advantage and almost closing out the round, Finesse. But it's gonna be Shroud left to clutch things, as he has 20 points of health left to work with. He's got loads of time, but really that health is going to be a very big limiting factor for him. Yeah, he's got a minute on the clock. He doesn't have the bomb either. I'm not sure if the uh, CTs know where the bomb is. Probably not, as he is heading towards it for the uh, retrieval. So we'll see which site he chooses. And he has to be weary of every single corner here. He knows where one CT was. doesn't know where the other CT is or was. So he's going to have to be super paranoid about it, just checking his six. But he doesn't have time to walk outside. 30 seconds remaining here, and he will get finished off somewhat inevitably. 14-0 mm. to CLG. Th that's, that one-on-two situation is super hard as a T on Nuke because of the insanely quick rotation times for the CTs. They can, play, they can basically play and allow you to plant and just, just to stick together so that they can always trade. Um, either on upper or lower, because they can just reposition super fast. It, you know, it's, it's fine to go for that, that super safe play and allow them to have some economy. I mean, we, we saw that that didn't really even come into play, but yeah, this is these, these clutch situations for Cloudland. They've had a few, but they never seem to go their way. And now we've got Peter trying to beat, beat at them with that AWP, and he's doing an excellent job at it as well. 
Alright, so already cut line two man deficit. Gonna get one frag onto the ramp area. Cutler with two frags in return. And it's another round which has been completely decimated. Bomb is on the floor. We can see the flank coming in for Shazam. It's gonna be one frag, but he's not gonna be looking at his from behind. Just about doesn't get tagged there. Another frag as uh, CLG starting to get a little careless here. But uh, ooh, Shazam with a nasty fall there. 15 0. It's been a long time since I've seen that, even on Nuke. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, again, Cloud9 had a lot of opportunities. They had a lot of bomb plants, they had a lot of economy, so they were getting the buys in. The problem was is that the kind of, of angel-y uh, star that we, was, we saw from them, today, CLG were just winning, winning the jewels and uh, their, their momentum. They're, they're, they're a team that, when their, their emotions are running high, they're, a, they're super scary. They start doing stuff that's, that's really nuts. And uh, Cloud9 you know, are running into this kind of strength. So we're into the pistol now, and Cloud9 are going to have to 15-0 them right back to have a chance here. But you never know. It's a pistol round, and here they come. Okay, so this is uh, just to salvage a bit of honor here, potentially, for Cloud9. You can see Semphis is already in position on the B bomb site, but still G no. And this is something that, that's uh, common for people playing pugs, matchmaking, etc. If you get a fast frag on ramp, you don't necessarily have to just start rushing into B. They've got a minute 10 on the clock here, so they've got lots to play with. They're looking for the flank, trying to put things, give them a bigger advantage, and that is going to be a huge frag. Semphis could have done a lot of work with that, but he's going to go down straight away. And uh, Shroud's going to have to try and defend for his team between the two vents, but Cloud9 all over the place at the moment, trying to get back on the site. No plant yet from CLG as uh, they will be scared of, of Strad. Now you've got the crossfire from the ramp as well, and things starting to look pretty bad here for CLG. Yeah, I mean, they were delaying the plant. It was smart to keep all the uh, all hands on deck for these engagements, as they had plenty of time. But can Hayes salvage this situation one on two now? He's actually created a doable round. Here he goes, on to Shazam. He finds the angle, doesn't connect the head though. Switches target again and again. Oh, doesn't quite pull it off. Hayes was looking to completely ruin Cloud9's day, but... Hey, I mean, they're going to give themselves a chance to come back into this one. But CLG, oh my god, they are going to be feeling so amazing. He really wanted that 16-0, and he was so close. Just one more tap away from finding it for his team. And even if they can close things out quickly here, this will be great. If it comes down to round difference later on, if they tie, then uh, this is going to be an important map. But Cloud9, not out of it yet, as bad as the score may look. They're entirely capable of doing the same. We've seen it many times before in Nuke, where one team has been dominated 13-2, the other team comes back and does exactly the same. They do have the Vamasses, they do have the MP7. They're up against pistols and one scout. Can they get the frags, though? Yeah, I mean, so far, so good for Cloud9. Shazam opening things up, but they are quite, quite low on a couple players, so you never know if things can get worse for them from here on out, but nothing is going to... Hold it down, but he is really low now as well. Now, CLG are biding their time at the moment, using uh, that clock to see if they are going to be able to find another Cloud9 player who wants to peek. And it's going to be Shazam who gets found by the Hell Area. So CLG three against four now. Again, two of which very low, nothing in Semphis. Giving uh, CLG a very interesting situation to play with. They've managed to acquire the control room area. And here it is. Tarek is going to shut down Semphis and then things are getting worse and worse for Cloud9. They're down to the last two men. Sean Gares and Shroud with the MP7s coming into play as they make their way down to the lower bomb site. Shroud sprays down two. It's on Peter with that bomb ticking away. Sean Gares and Shroud are quite low. Peter, he's got the drop on them. Here he goes. Oh, it, there it is. He spots him, gets a quick headshot, and he oh, can't quite get out of there in time. Wow, if he'd, if he'd moved, decided to take the fight there, who knows what would have happened, but, but a small miscalculation is going to give Shroud just the time he needs to get the defuse in and, again, save Cloud9. But after a round like that, and the damage that they did in the bomb plant, James, give me that, te give me that M SMG rush on upper site right now. Yeah. Cloud9 up against all the match points, all of them. Every single one, literally. And they are forcing it up, which is very smart after all of that damage. You ha it's, like, it's a must play. You can't not do that in this situation. Cloud9, they are hurting. And uh, if they, I mean, even if they don't win this round, they're going to be able to do so much damage economically. It's a war of attrition. Eventually, Cloud9 won't have a buy. 
to have a good, a solid round. They're always going to be playing from behind. <laughs> These are doing jumping 360s, but he can't get away oh from God. the spray of Semphis. This guy. Ooh, in the head as well. In the head and dead. In the head. Shazam, behind the smoke in the secret area. Or is that uh, Mac? I'm not even sure. There we go. It is Mac after all. So he's holding a similar angle that we saw on the previous round, but it looks like they may be suspicious of that. Nice nade dropping in there. Shazam made himself known. Now he's uh, in a difficult situation because if he peeks, he may get his head ripped off with that AK. Four versus four now. It almost feels like CLG have the advantage with Shazam stuck in that position. Basically, he can't, can't do much of anything at the moment unless he goes for a trade, but uh, the rest of his team not in position there. So he's going to be stuck for a while, starting to escape, in fact. And look at this creep here from CLG, all heading towards the B bomb site, going to take over control. But uh, Crossfire's already in place here for Cloud9. So Shadow beat things up for Cloud9. And it's uh, looking good for them so far. Hazed and Cutler. Stuck on the bomb site now. Hayes coming out with two quick kills. Oh no, Cloud9 are in trouble at the moment. Shroud and Shazam. They at least have a situation where the time is running out and the bomb cannot be planted. Hayes can't do anything right now. And they aren't even interested in, in fragging him after time here. Or actually no, Shazam wants to go for it, but that was such a crazy engagement. I, I would never see him winning that one. That was very tough indeed, but I guess he's a braver man than I. Cloud9, three rounds. To the 15 of CLG, and here is the buy from them. Look at that, it's, it's so horrible. And having gotten the having got that uh, the damage in again, CLG are like, Well, let's just buy, and it's a smart choice. I mean, they're gonna have that big bonus from the the uh, consecutive round loss, so they are just gonna there's gonna be constant buys, constant buys. Yeah, Cloud9 only survived one play there, so that was gonna be an expensive round, and you can see the results of it more MP7 5 7 on Shazam. And he is again smoked off in the Mac area. Rotations coming out from Cloud9. Are they going to go towards the right place? Cutler with the Tech 9, getting close enough to Shazam to take him down there. It's left for Sean Garrett to try and defend the ramp. He's going to hold a Molotov out as well. Not as many Molotovs as we saw on the other side just yet. They want this uh, ramp control, and they're going to get it. Sean Garrett goes down to Hazed. As Controlling and the lower site is soon to be taken by CLG as well. They've got some good positions. Three on three. Finesse goes in, catches Semphis off guard. In comes the two remainders of Cloud9 from the vent area, getting the spray down and getting control of the round. Four to 15, but again, so many losses. They're down to two men and that they keep losing so much money in these rounds. And CLG, they can buy and buy and buy again until Cloud9 have nothing left to play with. Okay, so Cloud9 have still only got four rounds on the board. It feels like it's been ages in, in this second half, but it really hasn't been that long. As uh, they need 11 more to take this to overtime again. Both teams fighting for their for their land placement here. Cutler with a nice uh, first frag as they push towards the A site. Hayes going to follow up as well. So only three left for Cloud9, looking to even up the numbers, but they're falling one by one by one. Shazam. Nothing left to try and salvage this round for their team. They know where Shazam is as well, so it's going to be really hard indeed for him. But where is nothing? He needs a support. Shazam not going to find it. Nothing going to fall soon after as well. 16-4 in favor of CLG. That is a monster match for him, but it's a monster round difference as well should it come.